There you were. You went to this modelling job in good faith. It had been checked out by your, your then agent, yes. uh, Phil Green, so you, you were happy that everything was fine. Yeah. When did you first think, this doesn't feel right? It was when I walked into the studio and there was just silence. Normally, someone would greet you at the door, close to the door, but I just didn't hear anything. So that's why when I saw the door saying studio on it, I went to open it, but before I had the time to quickly process my thoughts, that is exactly when the masked man put his arm around my neck and my, my mouth and nose. So and he, injected you. Yeah, and inject, well, another one came to the front of me and injected me in my wrist. So there were two men two at this men, point. Two masks. Um, when you saw that syringe, I mean, this happened in seconds. When you yeah. saw that syringe in his hand, what was going through your mind? Absolute panic. I didn't know what it was. Um, I didn't know why, why they were doing it. At this point, I still thought someone wrong had got me and the shoot, the shoot was still supposed to go on. I didn't connect it as a setup. Yeah. And did where, you where instantly did you pass up? out? When, when you passed out, when, when did you first wake up? Where were you when you woke up? I woke up in the boot of a car in a, in a zip-up bag. Oh, um, my word. And I had, so this like, is tape the... on my mouth and handcuffs on my feet and my... And they took pictures of you, hands. we now know. Um, and you're looking yeah. at those pictures now, can well, you believe... Well, that's not... That's not... You, but the, the size of that's that... That's a reenactment there, but you were inside a plastic bag. You yeah, were sweating, yeah. you could hardly breathe. Yeah, it was Your really mouth was day, taped yeah. up. What was that experience like? It was horrible. I was still drugged up, so I, I didn't like process it automatically, but I was trying to shout and trying to find my way out, but I didn't know what was happening. Um, the car was moving? The car was moving and the radio was blaring as well, so I couldn't really get the attention, so I had to really raise my voice, like, driver, driver, uh, where are we? And then it took a while for them to actually pull over the car and come round the back, and then I was still asking questions when they came round. But were they was, still masked? They were still masked at this point, yeah. But you were able to see something in the back of that car, a suitcase. Yeah, it was when they put the pullover, I saw through the gap that they'd put an empty suitcase above it, and at that point I didn't... I thought that I was going to die, because what other reason would they put an empty suitcase about my size that, on top? That was what you thought was your coffin? Yeah, yeah. I just wasn't, I was hoping for, like, a... Non-painful death. Oh, I know. I know. Listen, you know, do you know, Chloe? I think when we saw you give your your news conference, and even when you started this interview talking, I think you you speak very well. You're very well composed, and a lot of people don't understand that. They understand what they see now, but they don't understand why you're not constantly on show as a nervous wreck. Yeah, that's just but, how I am as a person. I try yeah. to be as strong as possible. Um, and I was in Italy for three weeks before I actually came home to the UK, so I had yeah. what people here didn't witness was me crying almost every day, me being too paranoid to leave my room, any noises I hear, I would freak out, having nightmares. No one here witnessed that. Um, I only started to get more reassured as it came to the end of the three-week period when police were trying to reassure me that and they know the truth of the story and I don't have to be as fearful as I am now when I return to the UK. Well, um, after a three-week investigation, the police in Italy have charged a man, uh, Lucas Herba, with kidnap and extortion. They say your story is credible and court documents have confirmed the key details of your story as well. Um, it's also been confirmed that you were drugged with ketamine and that there was an injection hole in, in your arm. The first time you laid eyes on Herba, or you heard his voice, these two men in this car, they brought you to this country farmhouse. You had no idea where you were, what country you were in, if you'd been put on a plane, a boat or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you woke up in this farmhouse. Tell us about Herba. And, and he, he, the, the first time you heard him, he was rowing with the other two men, because it seems to be yeah. that you were not the intended target. No, because they said they'd call the boss, and I didn't know the boss would be Herba. So there was, like, an argument going on downstairs, and then that was the last I ever saw of the masked man and the one that I saw that wasn't masked. So then, eventually, he came upstairs and sat on the bed and said, I don't know if you remember, but I met you briefly in Paris at the airport. And did you um, remember? No, I didn't recognise him at first. Did he tell you, um, Herba, did he tell you what the intention was what, after they kidnapped you? Uh, for they're... sex trafficking. Yeah. He said I would be sold to somewhere in the Middle East and that the men would use the girls for about three months, pass them round to all the relatives and friends, and then when they're eventually bored of the girls and they just feed them to the tigers. And they feed, the, feed them to the tigers? Yeah. Um, how terrifying. I mean, that is absolutely 
ghastly. Yeah. But at the same time, he opened up negotiations. He was sending emails back um, to the UK, and your your agent, your then agent, was handling those and brokering some sort of deal, which Herba said that he would accept some sort of mm -hmm. payment um, uh, for you. <sighs> Wasn't it d difficult for you then, when you, you had an agent who was working on your behalf doing that, to then leave that agent so quickly after coming back? No, because I can't help but blame him because my mum said that when she called him and said that I was missing, she was urging him to check out the studio and the number of the photographer to see if I turned up to the shoot. Um, and then the next day, he was able to check that the studio doesn't exist. Although on, on Good Morning Britain, he says that he did check and that he yeah, looked on true. Google Obviously Maps and the studio was there. Save well, himself. But he yeah. said he called other agencies within Milan and no one had ever heard of the studio. So, so I did feel really let down because I don't take bookings through my email or DM on Instagram because for that reason I feel that it's not safe. But then to rely on a manager to have done all the checks and then be let down and almost lose my life because of it, it's, of course, I'm going to change agency. I mean, all this... If when you read it all, it, it, it sounds like a, a film. Yeah. You know, it's incredible to think you're sitting here. How has this affected you? How has it changed you? Well, I still am scared. Even when I'm home, I'm not going to be the same person again. I'm going to have a complete career change. It's really affected my life. You're going to have a complete career change? So yeah. what, what do you mean? What, what will the future hold for you? I haven't really thought about the future yet so much, but I know that I won't be the same as what I was before. You don't want to model anymore? Not glamour model, no.